come what may, I'm headed down the right path. I feel so brave, my head held high and I'm showing class. Dreams ignited, every day I truly give my best. I'm grabbing excitedly to be the very best version of myself. I'm so bold and I'm so brilliant. Hello and happy new year to you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Shundria Show. I'm your host, Shundria Brownlow. Now today's episode of The Shundria Show is a special one on money matters in this brilliant new year. My special guests include a lineup of amazing panelists. Dr. Janisa Bennett is the CEO and founder of Rosebuds Investments, a real estate consulting company that teaches financial literacy and the beginning stages of real estate. Delicia Ballinger is no stranger to overcoming adversity as she moved from being pregnant and homeless to owning a successful PR and social media firm called Dollface Public Relations. Renisha Toombs, AKA Miss Glassy, is a celebrity financial and credit coach providing industry secrets on how to achieve success using OPM or other people's money and live the lifestyle of your dreams. Dr. Jamisa Bennett, Delicia Ballinger and Miss Classy. Welcome to the Shandria Show. How are you all doing today? <laughs> grateful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, let's dive on in. Okay, so I hope your new year is off to an amazing start. Um, we're going to be discussing today money matters in this brilliant new year. Um, please, ladies, briefly introduce yourself. Tell me about your business and why you chose to serve the way you do. We'll start with you, Delicia. Well, again, my name is Delicia Ballinger, and I am the Chief Marketing yes. Officer for Dollface Public Relations here in Memphis, Tennessee. And I serve as individuals, businesses, anyone that is looking for any kind of publicity uh, for their business. I'm also a journalist as well for several different publications. So I just enjoy writing, writing about women, um, and celebrating women also within my PR work as well. Fantastic. Dr. Bennett? Oh, hi. So I'm a wife, a mom, and a real estate investor. By trade, I got into real estate by accident, and I had extreme success with it over the last seven years. So I serve just because I want people to know, hey, it's not as difficult as you think. And it's very necessary for you to change the paradigm of what these generational curses have been served to us. So it's like, hey, you can be a mom, you can be a wife, you can be successful, you can look good while doing it, and you can do it on your own terms. Fantastic. And Miss Classy, hi. <laughs> um, I am the owner of Classy Credit. Um, it is a credit repair company that specializes in 30-day results. Um, I got into credit and finance because I saw the need for uh, credit and financial literacy in my community. And I decided to be the change um, in order to help my people be able to move forward and create generational wealth. Awesome. I, I love the selflessness in the room today. Mm -hmm. you know, I thank you all for, you know, thinking of others as you grow and, and, and run your businesses. So we'll get started with some questions and chat today. So it's a brand new year, right? A brand new year with new financial goals. Dr. Bennett, what advice do you have for us to get in the right money mindset this year? Um, I would say start how you want to finish. A lot of people will give you advice and they'll just say, you know, scale up. And I do believe that once you know better, you do better. But in the meantime, you just do. But I would just say in an effort to not waste time or resources, start with a plan. Know exactly where you want to go and behave as if you're already halfway there because more often than not, you are. So like, okay, let's say if your goal is, um, I want to make seven figures this year. You can literally break that down into what that would look like. How much would you have to make each month? Then take it a step further. Okay, you want to make $10,000 each month. Okay, how much would you need to make a week? What would you need to sell per day? And then you'll, you'll be able to minimize your goal in a way that it's achievable opposed to becoming overwhelmed with it. Oh, I love that. That's, that's excellent tips, my goodness. Then Ms. Classy, I'll ask you, I know the right mindset definitely aligns with our financial behaviors as well. How can we improve our relationships with money in order to make better financial decisions in the future? Um, honestly, I would say smart investments. 
um, in order to have a better relationship with money, you must know how to properly spend it. Um, and the number one way to spend money, I don't care what tax bracket you in, or who you are, is investing. When you invest smartly, that money will always come back to you and you'll end up with that better relationship with money. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Okay. Delicia. So let's talk about money matters in business. You know, as entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, tell me how you financially prepared yourself to start your business. You know, did you save first? Did you go to the bank? Did you work on your credit? Did you work on your nine to five? What did you do personally to achieve your goal? I literally did everything that you said um, because I literally started from nothing. Again, with my journey being pregnant and homeless, I didn't have the, the collateral or capital to be able to start a business. So for myself, I had to take the bartering route because at the end of the day, I am very, um, I, I love and I'm very passionate what I do. So I truly believe that my gift was going to get me out of the rift that I was in. And so I know that I had to take that by step by step. So I bought her services. I even worked a nine to five and allowed my nine to five to be able to supply what it is that I wanted to as far as my business or created my capital um, to be able to start uh, my business. And then when I reached a certain point, I took that leap of faith and here it has everything uh, has begun as far as my business. Wow. Congratulations to you yeah. and all, all of you, really, because that's phenomenal what you all are doing. So all of you are incredible, inspirational and powerful in your own way. You know, and this pandemic has been challenging, to say the least. It's put millions of people in financial ruts. So speak to someone watching who may be starting over in life after they've hit rock bottom. You know, what do you do when that checking account is low, the bills are due? You know, where do you start over? How do you start over? You know, and I'll start with you, Ms. Classy. Um, very first thing is prayer. Pray yes. to whoever it is that you pray to. Um, prayer always changes things. Um, once you pray, I think it's important to look at yourself in the mirror, like literally, physically plant yourself in front of a mirror and look at yourself. Each and every person has a specific set of skills that sets them aside. No one else possess that power that you have. The problem is a lot of people haven't figured out what that power is and tapped into it. But when you are literally at rock bottom and that checking account is negative, you have no choice but to bet on yourself. When everything else fails, bet on yourself and you cannot go wrong. I don't care if you like baking cakes or if you don't like baking cakes and you're just good at it. Now is the time, honey, to bake those cakes and see <laughs> what the life is it does. Everyone literally has a certain set, set of skills that people will pay top dollar for. From cookies, to real estate, to credit, figure out what your superpower is. And I promise you, there are people out there who will pay top dollar for it. You just have to figure out what it is that you're great at. We all Absolutely. have it. Okay. Yes. And, and to follow, and to follow. <laughs> yes. sure, and I'd love to follow up on that as well. You know, um, I can definitely agree with you, Ms. Classy. Prayer is everything um and truly believing in yourself because that's again that's where it all starts being passionate about what you're going to do is really going to be your start into getting into success no one is going to believe what you're going to do no one is going to have the passion as much as, you, as much as you do and believing in yourself and pushing yourself and consistency will definitely help you start your way you know into success you know they always say that you know people don't start believing what you do until it gets popular Make them believe by believing in yourself first. That's the main thing for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Dr. Bennett, what do you think about that? That's solid advice. Um, I'm not going to tell them what I think they should do. I'm going to tell them what not to do. Okay. Don't look left and don't look right. It is very easy, especially in these days and times, to try to mirror what you see out in the world, whether it be social media, whether it be whatever reality show that you watch and you start to compare yourself. Comparison is the thief of dreams, literally. Just because somebody else looks like they're doing really good at whatever they're doing, that does not mean that you're doing bad at what you're supposed to be doing. Everything is not for everybody. So I would really say what these ladies said, listen, focus on yourself by listening to God. He'll be able to give you that clarity and you'll be able to fulfill your purpose. Sometimes God sets you aside and he may pluck you from a certain atmosphere because that's not where you belong. So I would say focus during those times when you're like in the worst of a situation, 
the only way you really can go is up and you're at a, you're actually at an advantage because what you can do is not make the same mistake twice. You know exactly what you did wrong because you know exactly what landed you in a specific situation. So now you have a blank canvas. You are able to start over, pray, plan, and prosper. That's it. Man, that's Brown said, if you can look up, you can get up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a question for you. How young, and I, it's some moms on the line in the room today. So how young yeah. can we start preparing our youth for such an important financial lesson? At what age will they truly understand? Um, I don't know if there's a certain age in which they understand, but I know that they're conditioned very early. So I say like, as soon as they're able to talk, you talk responsibility to them. You talk money to them um, because we teach them to be consumers from birth. Literally, from the time they start walking and talking, we're buying them stuff. Oh, this toy talks. So oh, this one dances. Oh, this, you know, so we're constantly showing them what a consumer is. So I feel like we should use that same energy to teach them what a producer is. Because believe it or not, they pay attention. My five-year-old, actually, she showed me. I didn't know that she paid attention to me as much as she did. I was trying to do a challenge. I said, hey, I need a good question. So my son, he's seven. He said, ask people what it takes to start real estate. I said, well, that's a hard question. Some people will say money. Some people will say credit. They're both right. My five-year-old says, well, mom, what about the LLC? And I was like, well, what about it? Because you do need that as well. She's five years old. So that just let me know, okay, start to include her in certain things. But I feel like as, as early as you begin to express English language to your child, you should be providing good money habits and just kind of showing them things. Yes, we bought these things, but this is how we did it. Explain to them why you're buying real estate. Explain to them, you know, why mommy may have a credit card, what this credit means versus what money means. Like, and those talks with them. So they'll grow up in it. It'll be um, a customization for them, so to speak. Make it their norm. Delicia, how old is your, how old is your baby? And so I, I have an eight-year-old okay. and he is one of those kids that are like super smart and has been beyond the years since God knows when. And so just to, you know, piggyback, yes, when they can, when they have the ability, because my son is very eager and passionate and he loves learning, he loves reading books, he wants to learn more. And I want to capitalize on that. And another thing is also, you know, being able to be a teacher to him as far as what not to do, because I've made so many mistakes when you're talking about financially at a young age, but that all of course came from lack of knowledge in the home. I wasn't aware of a lot of things to do when it came to my financial. So I made a lot of mistakes. So that's my proposition to my son is to be able to teach him things and mistakes that I've made so that he can be able to be financially smart and empowered when that time comes. So just now, like I said, with him being eight years old and he's soaking things up like a sponge, I just want to be able to be that number one resource to him and letting him know that, hey, you can be financially empowered and also um, showing him meaning in ways to, to earn, um, knowing that everything isn't a given. You have to be able to work hard for what it is that you want. So being able to get an allowance, but you have to earn it, learning the process of being able to save. So that way, when you want games or Roblox, that seems that's all the kids like these days are Roblox and all kinds of games that you can be able to have those funds readily available so that you can have what you want. Ms. Classy, what do you think? Because I know you help people restore their credit. You help them at a point where sometimes things are kind of low, things are kind of in disarray. How can we help the youth um, kind of break that cycle? Um, so I will say legally, you are able to begin working on your credit at the age of 16. However, for Black people, that doesn't apply to us. We always have to work 10 times as hard and, and start early. So my personal opinion is as soon as they can talk, they, they, they need that leverage. Um, and it is our responsibility to teach them what, it, what these kids need to survive in the real world is no longer part of the curriculum in school. Um, mm -hmm. I remember they used to have home ec. A lot of schools don't even have home ec. That's why you're having young girls having children and they do not know how to properly prepare meals for the children. Um, I remember... I mean, this is before my my time. My sister was in school and they would teach you how to read a map. Nowadays, without your phone, you don't know north from south. Um, mm -hmm. So everything that is really needed, such as credit and finance, isn't discussed. Um, teach your children um, the importance of hard work, 
um, how to count money. Um, like she just said, um, working, getting your allowance, making them count out. For example, um, I have my, uh, my kid, uh, he pumps the gas for me, seven. <laughs> He'll get out and he pump the gas and he said, okay, how much do I stop at? I say, okay, stop at 50. He knows, okay, let me stop at 50. I say, hey, what is an LLC? He'll tell me what an LLC is. What is a corporation? And he'll tell me what a corporation is. But like, like the ladies were saying, at a young age, their brain soaks up everything. If they could know all of these song lyrics by heart, there is no reason <laughs> why you know how to count money, um, euros, the nettles, pesos, all the O's. They should be able to know all of it. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is even if you do not have children, you have to realize that this whole journey is bigger than you. So for whoever's watching and you do not have children, that is perfectly fine. Think about your culture as a whole. If you do not be the one to stand up and make that change, nothing is going to change. You can't complain if you're not willing to do anything to change it. Um, so once you teach a child or the youth that you've already helped, you're already helping, it's able to change, it's able to process. There is no reason why at the age of 16, you start working on that child's credit. You add them as an authorized user onto your credit card that you don't burn and mess up. By the time your child graduates from high school, do you know that they will have an 850 credit score? That okay. graduating from high school, they can go and buy their first real estate property. That way, that real estate property is the money that takes care of them while they're in college. Come on, like it's, it's, it's yeah. not, it's, it's, okay. it's really okay. not, it's knowledge. Yeah. It's knowledge. Now when they're 40, 50 years old, they have this house that they got at the age of 18 that we did not sell because they don't sell. So we have to stop selling and you keep it in the family. And now that's a family home that goes generations and generations. I don't care what the stock market does or how much they offer you, don't sell it, keep it. And now you have a heirloom that is a property to pass down. Yeah. If we, we just have to begin to think that way and stop being afraid to ask questions. It's okay to ask questions and we have to stop fearing the unknown. Naturally, as humans, I feel if it's something new or, or different, we're not familiar with it. Naturally, we shoot away. Oh, that's not real. It's a scam. Mm -hmm. Setting ourselves up for failure. It, it doesn't yep. listen yep. to Preach. Absolutely. Preach. <laughs> Preach. Absolutely. And it's about it's about changing those generations. It's about changing our stories, changing our dynamic. It can't be the way it was when Big Mama was around. And I, I love that you all carry that mindset. And I feel like you all are you all are the change that our culture and people in general need. So knowing everything that you know about financial matters, I mean you are all experts in your own way. What is one valuable lesson that you learned that you can share with the audience today? We'll start with you, Ms. Dr. Bennett. I would say that real estate is not a luxury. It's actually a necessity. When you think about real estate, it is everything you participate in. It's like nothing that you can do in the world does not involve real estate. You're born as a hospital. That's the building. It's real estate. You die, you get buried. That's ground somebody owns. It's real estate. The food you eat is grown, farmed somewhere. Real estate. Air rights, real estate. You drive somewhere. Somebody owns that highway. It's real estate. So we have to stop looking at it like, oh, real estate's not for everybody. You got to really hone in on the type of real estate you may want to do. Okay, maybe you don't want to be a landlord, but you can still invest in real estate in other ways. You can do REITs, which is literally you just purchasing stock of real estate without you being there. You can literally be a property manager for someone else's real estate just to make enough so you can buy your own because they do not make any more land. What they have now is all that they're ever going to have. That's the one thing that can't be reproduced. That's also the one thing that cannot be taken from you ever. So as Ms. Toom said, you can pass it on from generation to generation. If you own something, you control the full aspect of it. You will never be homeless. You will never have a situation where there's no equity in it. Like it gives you leverage. Real estate is a leveraging tool. And I feel like everybody should be a part of that because rightfully so, our ancestors died for it. They slaved over it. It's literally ours. But because of the lack of knowledge, we easily give it away. If you look at the word spell, the acronym, fear always interrupts legacy all of the time. So now here we are, beg, borrowing, and trying to steal something that's rightfully ours. So I would tell anybody that's listening, listen, whether it's one, 
or 101, get you some real estate because what you don't own, you do not control. And you don't want to be out of control of your life. That's the worst thing that you can do. I don't care how consistent your job is. I don't care how much salary they give you, the 401k and they match it. They're literally just buying your time to interrupt you from your dreams and your legacy. So don't do it heavily. One thing that belongs to you and let it be real estate. Phenomenal. Delicia, last but not least, my dear. Yes. Um, you know, one of the biggest things because, you know, um, I am a, I, I'm, I can say I'm a bad girl turned good. I've, I've been through a lot. And when I tell you as far as challenges and things of that nature, and I'll, I'll be 35 in the next 30 days. And I'm so glad and grateful to say, especially coming from Memphis, Tennessee, where it's really hard to be able to acquire things as your own. I am happy to say that I acquired my first piece of land and became a homeowner just last year. So it's really a blessing. And for years, I felt like, I couldn't do this because of the fear of the unknown, because of the lack of knowledge. And it took me actually doing the research and doing the work and actually really wanting this particular piece of land for myself and for my kids to be able to go forth and actually make that home purchase. And not only that, I did it the smart way by inquiring about different and various programs within my area. I was able to put $1,500 down on my home and that moved me into my home. Is it the, the top of the line with the columns and the big windows? No, but it's what I need and it's what has my, my family together and we're all happy in this particular space and we all have the room. So just being able to have that piece of luxury um, is such a wonderful feeling to have, but you have to be able to know what you're getting into and make smart financial decisions. I had to save and did all of that for that $1,500, but look at where I am when you're talking about literally living on the streets to being able to pull up in my driveway and be like, thank you, Lord, for being able to have a roof over my head. I wish that for every single individual and everyone that's trying to acquire their piece of land or anything as far as moving forth and what they want to do for this year. Phenomenal. Wow, ladies, I am so impressed by, by all of you. And I'm actually really proud of all of them. I'm just meeting you all today, but I'm so proud of what you've accomplished and that you, you know, take the time like this to share your gifts, share your tips um, and your expertise with the world. And that's what makes the community a better place. That's what makes the, the community stronger. So I want to thank you all for being my special guest here on the Shakira Show. What is the best way for us to connect with you? If anybody wants to book your services, if you find anybody wants to follow your journey, what's the best way to connect? with you we'll start with you Delicia. yes um and, and let me also put this out there as well when it comes to the marketing aspect um and what i like to be able to offer my people as well is because a lot of people can't afford a lot of um a lot of marketing services and that's what i'm here to do is to be able to put your brain and put whatever it is that you feel that is going to be able to change the world i want to be able to be a part of that and do that at a affordable rate for you and if that's something that you want to be able to do definitely please reach out to me on instagram at dollface lifestyle that's l-y-f-e-s-t-y-l-e and on facebook at dollface public relations thank you so much dr bennett hi so i am on all platforms as rosebuds investment so both words are plural there's an s at the end of rosebud there's an s at the end of investments and i don't really do courses i feel like real estate has become very gimmicky but I do specialize in actually taking people to auctions. Um, I, to date, I've helped 415 people purchase properties using $1,000 or less. So that's amazing, Delisa, that you were able to do that. So if you guys need help with that, you can reach out to me at Rosebud's Investments every year. And last but not least, Miss Classy, tell us how we can connect with you and get those credit services in the new year, girlfriend. <laughs> So oh, you can find me on Instagram and YouTube at I'm Miss Classy. I am Miss um, M S C L A S S Y. Um, on Facebook, it is Renisha Toons. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Um, right now, I have my um, open enrollment for my six figure club, which is basically where I help you to make six figures in a year. We repair your personal credit. Um, we help you start a business. We help you take that business and generate six figures. And then I teach you how to take that money and invest it and flip it using OPM, other people's money, to get the things you want, whether it's real estate or 
a car or you just want to take trips. You just the lifestyle. So the that's lifestyle. <laughs> Awesome. Fantastic. Well, ladies, thank you again and again. I am so grateful. You all have been phenomenal. Hello, it's Shundria Brownlow, host of The Shundria Show, and I hope that you enjoyed that spectacular episode and that spectacular interview that we just saw. I'm so grateful to each and every one of those amazing ladies who took the time to give valuable tips um, so that we can have a better financial year uh, for, the, for all of us, not just me, not just you, for all of us. Wishing you a very, very happy new year. I hope that you at home watching, I hope that your interview, I'm mean, sorry, I hope that all of you at home i hope that your new year is off to an incredible start um, i know i'm excited about 2022 i don't know about you but i am looking forward to everything that the shandria show will, um, will be doing this year all the amazing interviews that are coming so thank you so much for keeping it locked right here to watch this channel to watch the shandria show it really really means a lot to me you watching means so much to me um, as you know i am independently producing and hosting this television show um, and so it means a lot your viewership I'm also so grateful year after year for this incredible station to continue to run the show the show the reason that I am so excited about 2022 is because I actually am working on a TV series um, which I'll be looking forward to releasing um, sometime this year so please 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 stay in tune check back, continue to watch the Chandria show. And of course, that television series is gonna be coming soon. I'll be doing castings. Um, so if you know any actors and actresses all over the world, um, because C. Brown on Media is gonna continue to film amazing TV and film projects, but calling all actors and actresses, crew members, um, anyone with distribution, uh, any of those sorts, um, they're looking to collaborate um, and work together. Um, have some amazing things on the horizon so i'm most excited about 2022 is this upcoming web series television series um and i can't wait to you know meet you if you're watching and you're an actress or an actress i can't wait to meet you know the cast i can't wait to see it come to life and i, I reflect i remember you know writing my first short film which was dear love and i remember writing these stories and you know anticipating the day that you know the story would come to life and you go from writing it and then you go to you know ca casting it and then you know you secure your actors and your actresses and then your crew and you know before you know it you're filming and you've got your locations and you're and you're filming and I, re I remember those special moments of just seeing my words you know the words that are in my head that I put down on paper and hearing my talents you know recite those and say those and you know before we know it we were in the post-production process and released it and you know you know so many of my friends and family and you know my, even my friends on social media were so instrumental in just helping me to market and circulate that film and um you know my stations were so helpful and helping me spread the word about dear to love and so <laughs> i don't expect any less for this next project i'm truly 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 looking forward to uh, this next project